Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Rider Two Brief. You know, I was gonna do a voiceover, I just decided to use the on-camera audio filming again with the awesome Panasonic GX85. For those of you who are wondering, and Jack is in the background. Jack, who's out there, boy? Who's out there, boy? Get him. Who is it, huh? Who's out there? Who is it? Who's out there? Today, I wanted to talk to you guys. Thank you, by the way, for watching uh, Rotter Tube Reef. Saltwater Aquarium Care means a lot. The video's a lot of fun to make, and you guys are just totally awesome. We have got some of the best subscribers on the web. If you haven't already, subscribe. And by the way, um, a lot of you have, have said that you're not getting alerted that my videos are coming online, uh, which is every Saturday, a new video. So if this is the case, in the channel where it says subscribed, next to where it says subscribed, there's a little bell icon. Click on the bell, a box will come up. Make sure the box is checked that says alert me to all new videos or activity on this channel and you'll get emails, all right? So today I wanna to talk about salinity and what it is. Basically, if you have a saltwater aquarium, there is salt in your water and we all know this. You have to mix your salt um, so how do you know if you've got too much salt in your water? Well, you're gonna get yourself one of these guys, a refractometer. There are cheaper versions. You know, there's all plastic. When I first got into this hobby, um, I got the cheap ass plastic one. You had to calibrate it, it was difficult, it felt flimsy and clunky, and I just didn't want to deal with that. I'd rather spend a little more money um, to get something that's done the right way and it's easier so here's what this is really cool it looks like a lightsaber and this is what you use to measure the amount of salt in your water you're gonna look in here with the eyepiece this is nice rubber this rotates nice and smooth for the focus. So when you look through here, if it's a little blurry, you can focus it. Uh, this screw is gonna calibrate this to zero. Zero means there's no salt in the water. So how you're gonna calibrate it, you're gonna take some fresh water, you're gonna calibrate this, meaning zeroing it out, so you get a proper salt water reading. Make sure this lens is clear. You're gonna take some fresh water. Doesn't matter if it's RODI or not. You're gonna just load it up. You're gonna flip that down, okay? Similar to a microscope for those of you working in the science field or in high school. Now, you're gonna look through this end and you're gonna see a gauge. You're gonna look through the eyepiece, you're gonna see a gauge, you're gonna see the graphic. You're gonna see numbers on the left and the right. With the pure water, non-salt water, it should register as zero. If it does not, you need to take this little uh, screwdriver that they provide and just turn it. Now I just calibrated mine it was just a little off. You don't have to do this every time. This is a set it and forget it type thing. I like to check it once in a while. It takes five seconds to do. You put the fresh water in here, you look through it. If it's zero, you're fine. If it's not, you just want to basically say, yes, it's zero. You want to move, turn this until it's the zero mark. You're going to find that it's always very close to zero with this. All right, so I've got salt water from the display tank. I'm gonna just drop it on here. Lift it up a little bit because it's falling off. Okay, close this. Let's see what it says. All right, <clears throat> so I looked through here. It is exactly 1.024. That is perfect. That is perfect. The ocean is 1.026 salinity. Corals like the higher salinity. If your salinity is too high, your fish will not like it. Neither will your corals. 
fish do prefer and they thrive in the 1.018 to 1.024 the lower the better for those guys corals prefer a little higher like the ocean 1.026 the best and the most often used salinity is 1.024 to 1.026 I'm gonna strive for the 26 so I'm just gonna add a little more salt with each weekly water change to get it to the 2.5 or 2.6 mark. For a quarantine tank, use less salt. Only fish are going in it, so I recommend 1.018. This is not to kill the parasites because that's not low enough to do it. Only fresh water will kill ick parasites and marine velvet. Your fish can't be put in fresh water unless you're just gonna give them a dip. So anyway, save some salt benefit your fish if it's a fish only aquarium no corals or inverts meaning snails and shrimp 1.018 is perfect there's also a little more oxygen in the water with a lower salt fish like that they thrive a little more I notice my fish really enjoy the the 18 mark this video is geared towards people starting out of course all you advanced guys and girls know about the salinity for those of you who don't, when you're making your salt water, how do you make it? You have fresh water, not from your tap, not from your faucet. You can buy it from the reef store, but I highly recommend you get yourself an RODI unit to make your own water at home. Your water filters through it in your house and you collect it in the Rubbermaid bin. It sounds like a hassle, but it's really not. Once you get that pure water, you're gonna add salt in the amount of a half a cup for every gallon so if you do a 10 gallon water change you're gonna need five cups of salt all right now through the days or through the week water will evaporate from your aquarium you all know this liquids evaporate solids do not so the salt will stay in your aquarium the water will evaporate which means your salt level will get a little higher as the water evaporates naturally because of mother nature. You're gonna to wanna to refill your tank with water. I go through about two gallons a week in my 125 gallon aquarium. Refill it with pure water, not salt water, because you will be adding salt to your aquarium and over time, the salinity level is gonna to be too high and your fish can die and your corals will become stressed. Remember that. Top off your aquarium as water evaporates with water only because salt will always stay. When you do a water change, you are removing say 10 gallons of salt water, so you replace it with 10 gallons of salt water. When you remove salt water, you replace salt water. The only time you replace it with natural pure water is through evaporation. If you have, say, parasites in your aquarium and you have a quarantine tank, a hospital tank, a second tank from your display tank, you never, ever, ever, ever want to use this equipment on your hospital tank and then your main tank because if you have a test you want to run on your quarantine tank and you dip this in and you suck the water out and you pour it in here say that this water is infected with parasites you close it you test it you determine okay here's how much salt I need or I'm okay whatever then uh, you don't clean this properly and you want to do a salt water test on your main tank you're gonna stick this in your main tank and suck the water up you just probably infected your main tank with parasites. Make sure you clean your equipment properly. And the best way to do that is to get a second one of these duplicate gear, but if you cannot afford that, and make sure you don't mix them up, if you cannot afford that, I let this soak in pure water because pure water will kill the parasites. It literally pops them. They implode. They cannot live in fresh water. I will soak this in fresh water 
suck this up a few times so this is filled with fresh water for 24 hours but to be safe I do it for a week this I just rinse really well with fresh water have a great week happy reefing I will see you guys next Saturday click the subscribe button if you haven't already if you have any questions please post and uh, give the video a like thanks for watching <laughs>